Welcome to Bulga Socks TV. We've got lots of classic and original TV shows. Subscribe now and enjoy the video. Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! Catch me if you can! Shining in Sunny Sands. Look out, Captain Dumbletwit! Grandpa and I were reading a Captain Dumbletwit story, and Jemima said, I think it's going to be a very dull day. But Jemima couldn't have been more Captain wrong. Dumbletwit. Suddenly we heard, I wonder who that can be. I ran and opened the door, and guess who walked in? Mr. Mentor the Inventor. Now, Mr. Mentor the Inventor lives in the lighthouse in Sunny Sands. He's always coming up with really crazy inventions. Like this, the grassy buggle jumper. Only the bugs liked it even more than he did. Then there's this, the automatic hairostatic that gives you a new hairstyle every day. And this, the Huffer Puffer Pillow Fluffer. Everyone loves going to visit him in the lighthouse and trying things out. So we were all wondering what he wanted today. Mr. Mentor, what a nice surprise. Have you come to stay? Oh, oh no, not at all. I'm on my way to a meeting of the most remarkable inventors of the universe. Sounds great, Mr. Mentor, but why are you here? I have an invention which I've almost invented, but I've had to leave it at the lighthouse. It's behaving rather badly and shouldn't be left by itself. Really? So, what is this invention? It plops the custard into a custard puff. It tends to plop when it shouldn't plop and not plop when it should plop. But when it works properly, I'm sure it will be fabidiculous. Yes, this was the day we got to see... Mr. Mentor's Custard Puff Plopper. So are you saying you'd like us to look after it for you while you're at the meeting? Oh, yes, please. Mr. Mentor gave Dad the key to the lighthouse. Then he picked up all his boxes and bags and went off to see the most remarkable inventors in the universe. Can I come with you, Dad? And me? Yes, yes, I could do with your help. Great, I'll just get my shoes. Who knows, I might be able to fix the custard puff plopper. I'll bring some tools. If Dad's going to try and fix Mr. Mentor's custard puff plopper, he's going to need my help. I'm coming too. Not the shrinking cup, Grandpa. Catch me if you can. You know what happens when Grandpa shrinks. He can get in my car and make it go. He can fly on Gordon, my toy seagull. He can get into our Sunny Sands train and chuff around. Or he can just run for all he's worth. At that moment, Jemima came running downstairs and Dad came in from the garden. Come on! <laughs> Grandpa gone for a little lie down, has he? Good idea. Come on! There was nothing I could do. Grandpa would have to find his own way to the lighthouse. So off we went in Campo and Jemima said, It's a pity Grandpa couldn't come with us. He's never seen Mr Mentor's inventing room. And Dad said, Yes, poor Grandpa, but he'd never manage all those stairs. But I had a feeling that Grandpa wasn't going to bother with stairs. <laughs> Grandpa! 
Grandpa had got here first. I quickly hid the plane under one of Mr Mentor's scarves. I knew Grandpa had to be hiding somewhere, but there was no time to look for him. So which one's the custard puff plopper? I think it must be this. I think you're right, Jason. Oh, I see. The milk, sugar and eggs are in the funnel. So custard should plop through this pipe into the puff. Dad, twiddled or not. I wonder why it's not working. And this is what happened. Careful, Dad! I think the custard's stuck in the plopping pipe. I need to look inside. There's a screwdriver in Campo. Would you mind fetching it, Jemima? So Jemima ran all the way to the bottom of the lighthouse to fetch Dad's screwdriver. Grandpa was trying to get to the custard puff plopper, but he couldn't with Dad right there. I needed to get him out of the way. Couldn't you do with a hammer too, Dad? I think you're right. This was Grandpa's chance. He jumped down, ran across the floor and climbed up the table leg. But there was only one way to get inside it, by climbing up the plopping pipe. Have you worked out what's wrong yet, Grandpa? Grandpa had worked it out. Suddenly, he pushed a nut out of the plopper. The nut wasn't screwed on properly. It's dirty. It needs a good clean. But there was no time to clean it. Somebody was coming up the stairs. It was... Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister. Oh, Mr Mentor has left you in charge of his inventions. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, that's all I need. I hope you haven't been interfering, Jason. Oh, you have to be very careful when you... Oh! Great Aunt Loretta had caught her boot in a hole in the floorboards. I caught my boot in a hole in the floorboards. Oh, now then. Where's this custard plop puffer Mr Mentor was talking about? Actually, it's a custard puff plopper. Well, that's what I said. Get out of the way, Jason. Grandpa oh. was hiding behind the custard puff plopper. Any moment, Great Aunt Loretta would see him. Oh. Oh. What was that? It wasn't a mouse, was it? I don't think so. While Great Aunt Loretta was looking for the mouse, Grandpa quickly took his chance. He leapt off the table and ran towards the hole. He was just jumping into it when... Oh, ah, I saw something disappearing into that hole! It must have been a mouse! Oh, it might eat one of Mr Mentor's inventions! Or it might get into the custard plop puffer plopper! Under the floorboards, the mouse was looking for the red plastic nut. But he wasn't having much luck. I can't see it anywhere. Bother! Oh, I've got it. Just the thing. <laughs> This'll scare the life out of it. A clockwork bumblebee. Exactly. The clockwork bumblebee didn't scare the life out of the mouse, but it did scare the life out of Grandpa. Now Great Aunt Loretta had her ear to the floor, listening. I can hear footsteps and rustling and panting. Must be a doddery old mouse down here. Perhaps you should just block up the hole. No! Yes! I can use this. Uh, come on, Jemima, you can do the stuffing for me. This was a disaster. Now Grandpa was stuck under the floorboards with a clockwork toy and there was no way he could get out. But Grandpa, being Grandpa, had a plan. Look, the mouse is pulling the scarf away! Ah! Help! 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 Ah! The good news was Grandpa had managed to climb out of the hole. The better news was he'd found the red plastic nut. And the best news of all was that he'd cleaned it with Mr Mentor's scarf. While Dad and Jemima were busy calming Great Aunt Loretta down, Grandpa climbed back up the plopping pipe. Just in time, too. Please don't worry about the mouse, Loretta. Have a go with the custard puff plopper instead. Ooh. <laughs> so Great Aunt Loretta started pushing buttons and pulling levers. Of course, she had no idea that Grandpa was inside. Well, it's no good, it's not flopping. <laughs> Sorry, Loretta. I thought I'd fixed it. Well, 
told you I didn't. I think we should take the custom puff plopper home. I've got loads more tools in my workshop. Back at home, Jemima was upstairs helping Great Aunt Loretta to clean up. And Dad was looking for some more tools. Grandpa, you must come out now. But it was too late. Dad was back. This should do it. Just tighten that. Loosen that. Turn this. Hey! Brilliant! Pass me a puff, Jemima. Great Aunt Loretta hadn't just plopped custard into her puff. She'd plopped Yo. Grandpa too. <laughs> ah! He's wiggling! Ah! I think the mouse is in it! Ooh. Loretta, it's okay, come back! While everyone was in the garden, I took Grandpa out of the puff. It was covered in custard, but it didn't stop him running into the sitting room. He whipped off his cap and came back to his normal size. We did it, Jason. We fixed the custard puff proper. <laughs> That's what I call teamwork. Teamwork, Grandpa. <laughs> Later, Mr. Mentor was absolutely delighted to see his custard puff plopper working. I'm absolutely delighted. You are a genius, Mr. Mason. You should join the most remarkable inventors in the universe. Of course, I couldn't tell Dad or Mr. Mentor that the really remarkable inventor was Grandpa. Ooh, you've woken up, eh, Grandpa? Do you fancy a custard puff? Uh, no thanks, Loretta. Yum. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. Oh, don't I? Oystering oysters, what a ridiculous rumpus. Master mate, Barnabas, Willie, what in the name of Neptune are you all doing up there? B -b -b Beggy pong, Cappy. B -b 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 there's, there's a b -b -b mouse in the crew's quarters. <laughs> It was some time before the captain was able to persuade his crew to come down from the crow's nest. And when at last they did, Pugwash was in a very bad temper indeed. Crippling crayfish, you're a fine lot, you are. Scared stiff by a mouse. Ah, oh, but this weren't no hungry mouse, Captain. Huge it were, Captain. Twice my size. Hey, and, and we saw it shadow. Horrible. In which case, arm yourself to the teeth, me hearties. This thing, whatever it is, must be destroyed. Very soon, the pirates were preparing for the hunt. They were still frightened, and would have been even more so if they'd known what was approaching on the starboard bow as the harbour clock struck midnight. Ha, ha, ha! Muffle the oars, me handsomes. That old ruffian's in for the shock of his life in a moment. Mm. Already? Right. We will search every nook and cranny of the ship. Lead on, master mate. Oi, oi, Captain. Lead on, Pirate Barnabas. Oi, oi, Master Mate. Lead on, Willy Boy. It's not fair. There's never anyone for me to give the orders to. <laughs> See anything, Pirate Willy? Uh, nothing, Captain. Only Tom the cabin boy asleep in his bunk. Hear anything, Pirate Barnabas? Nothing, Captain. Smell anything, Master Mate? It's you! <laughs> One of them's caught a cold by the sound of it. They'll catch a deal worse in a moment. Right, uh, that's every corner accounted for except my cabin. And if there's nothing there, I shall know you've been imagining things. Lead on!
There you are, told you so. Not a thing in sight. Oh! It's a mouse. Help! 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 Oh, what's that? Someone coming? It's Pugwash. They're armed. Run for it! Here, what was them splashes? Who was them blokes what was running away? And what was that thing in my cabin? Hey there! What on earth was all that noise about? Shouting and banging and bumping. And has anyone seen my pet mouse? Mouse? Well, here it is, in your cabin, Captain. Hello, Whiskers. What do you mean by escaping like that? Look, Captain, here he is. And look what a huge shadow he makes on the cabin wall. Well, I'll be... Oh, come on, all of you. It's bedtime. And very soon, all the pirates were fast asleep in their bunks. The captain slept too, dreaming of buried treasure. And nobody knew what had really happened that night, except possibly Tom's mouse. <laughs> And this is Rosie. Hello, Rosie. Let's put Rosie here. And this is Fizz. Hello, Fizz. And Rosie and Fizz have been very busy today playing with their toys and inside their toy box. And lots of clues for today's story. Shall we have a look? There's a toy cart, a bench, a wooden bench, and a tiny book. I wonder, whose book is this? Shall we find out? Let's switch to story time. And we switch to story time by making a big story clock. Can you make a big story clock with me? After three, one, two, three, a big story clock with seconds, minutes and hours. And pretend your body is the big hand and put your little hand like this and join in with me. Tick tock, it's the story clock. It must be time for a story. Tick tock, it's the story clock. Are you ready for a story? Stretch up high, stretch down low. Wriggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Tick tock, it's the story clock. Hands up, who's ready for a story? Fizz was busy collecting things. So far, Fizz had found some pink ribbon, a shiny coin, a stripy glove, and then Fizz spotted Hedgehog. Hello, Hedgehog, said Fizz. But Fizz let go of the cart. Uh-oh! Look out, Hedgehog, said Fizz. Bump! Crash! Oops, said Fizz. Bother! My wheel has come off. Fizz found his wheel under the long grass. 
And it wasn't the only thing he found. It's a book. Inside, it said, Please return to Library Mouse. Who's Library Mouse? asked Fizz. Hedgehog didn't know. Let's ask Rosie. I don't know where Library Mouse lives, said Rosie. Is there a clue in the book? Fizz looked closely. Oh yes, yes there is, said Fizz. On the back cover was a tiny piece of green paper. It said, map. Through the hedgerow, three steps, four. Over the bridge, find the red door. it is, said Rosie. Look, there's Dr Dolly and Owl and Bee. Hi Bee, said Fizz. That must be Library Mouse, whispered Rosie. Hello, can I help you? he asked. Oh yes, said Fizz. I found this book in the long grass. It says it belongs to you. Ah, oh, thank you, said Library Mouse. It belongs to the library. I've been looking for this for a while. Would you like to come inside? Open the door. Let's explore. Rows and rows of books galore. Stacked up high, stacked down low. Choose a book. Where will you go? Do you have a book about fixing things? asked Fizz. Fizz remembered his broken cart. Oh, yes we do, said Library Mouse. Just then, Fizz noticed a stripy glove on the shelf. I found a glove just like that today, said Fizz. You found my missing glove, said Library Mouse. I lost it one day when I was out for a walk. Would you like me to fetch it now? said Fizz. Why don't you bring the glove back to me when you return the book? That's a good idea, said Fizz. And that's what he did. And that was the story of Rosie and Fizz and the library. It's nearly time for Rosie and Fizz to go, but just before we do, let's stick the map, the stripy glove and the book inside the Rosie and Fizz storybook so they'll always remember their story adventure. And why don't you join us next time for another Rosie and Fizz story? I wonder what toys we'll find inside their toy box. We'll see you then. Bye! So let's find a page and let's stick in the book first. Let's do that. Find a page and here's the book. Bye!